I want to take you back to a time when whales walked. It was the beginning of the Eocene, around 50 million years ago. At the time, there were high temperatures and warm oceans, which created a moist, balmy environment. There were forests across the earth from pole to pole. And continents were on the move, which changed current systems so that strong coastal upwellings drove a surge of nutrients into upper surface waters. Diatoms, single-celled algae, bloomed in coastal waters so that these warm Eocene oceans teemed with fish and other marine life. It was an ideal place to hunt for predators. And it was at this time that the first mammals, the ancestors of whales, returned to the sea. But whales didn't evolve as a straight line from their land mammal ancestor to these fully aquatic mammals that we know today. There were many different amphibious or semi-aquatic types of whales that walked on land, swam in rivers, swam in coastal waters and oceans. These different forms arose really quickly, well, quickly in evolutionary times. Some whale types were more successful than others. While most disappeared, some became the ancestors of whales we know today. So let's take a closer look. Our story starts in what we know as Pakistan. It was around 50 million years ago that the earliest known cetaceans the Pachyocetes lived in rivers and Eocene forests. They looked nothing like we think of as a whale today. They were more like a wolf. But they had whale ears, auditory bulla. So they were adapted to hear underwater. And they had sharp teeth with high cusps, suggesting they ate fish. So perhaps they swam in rivers, hauling out to sleep on the shore, similar to a tapir today. A little later, Around 47 million years ago, we find Ambulocetus. It was an ancient whale that was more adapted to living in the water than Pachyocetus. They were much bigger than Pachyocetus, more than twice their size, a little over four metres long. They were probably still amphibious, but spent more time in the water. And their short legs had dense bones, and their strong hind limbs had huge feet, allowing them to be good swimmers but clumsy and slow on land. So Ambulocetus was more like a crocodile than the wolf-like Pachyocetus. But just like Pachyocetus, they had whale ears, those heavy, dense boned wood tree bulla. But now they had another whale-like underwater hearing adaptation. They had a lower jaw with a large cavity, which in tooth whales today is filled with fat. And this helps sound transmit from the water straight back to their ears. So Ambulocetus, this ancient whale, had taken steps further towards living an aquatic lifestyle. Later, around 37 million years ago, Duridon appears. A Duridon was one of the first of the ancient whales to give up on land completely. They moved solely by tail-powered swimming. But unlike a shark or fish, they moved with their enormous tail up and down, just like modern whales and dolphins do today. Their hind limbs were tiny and the elbows of their forelimbs stiffened as they became flippers. Ideal for manoeuvring and stabilising that five metre long streamlined body through the water. Their nostrils were not at the tip of the snout as in typical mammals, but had moved midway onto the top of their head. This makes it easier to catch a breath of air while underwater. Around about the same time, Lalanocetus appears. They're one of the first baleen whales but they look more like Duridon than modern baleen whales. In fact, all these early baleen whales didn't even have baleen. Instead, they had lobed teeth that they used to filter feed, just like a crab eater or a leopard seals do today. Just a little after this, at around 34 million years ago, the Earth's oceans changed. South America finally split from Antarctica so that circumpolar currents spiralled to isolate the Antarctic continent and the earth and her oceans cooled. Global extinction soared, but in those now cold, nutrient-rich waters around Antarctica, life exploded, particularly a diverse array of phytoplankton. This bonanza of tiny marine plants sustained huge swarms of small marine animals, like krill, salps, tiny fish, and squid. Now enters the time of the enormous baleen whales, the baleen whales we know today.